1.2 and 1.3 is titled Compound Interest. All right, compound interest is the interest that is earned or paid on both the principal and the previously accumulated interest. Take a look at page 20 in your textbook, example one. Yvonne earned $4,300 in overtime on a carpentry job. She invested the money in a 10-year Canada Savings Bond that will earn 3.8% compounded annually. She decided to invest in a CSB, a Canada Savings Bond, instead of keeping the money in a savings account because the CSB will earn more interest. So what is the future value of Yvonne's investment after 10 years? Well, the principal is $4,300, okay? The interest rate is 3.8% or 0 0.038 compounded annually. And the term will be for the first year, the second year, the third year, all the way up until 10 years. So at the end of year one, the total amount can be found using the future value formula. A equals P times one plus RT. A equals 4,300 times one plus 0 0.038 times one year. So A is 4463.40. So we keep doing this and we get after year two, our new principal is going to be the amount that we just found because it's reinvested. So 4463.40 times one plus 0 0.038 times one works out to 4633.01. So then after year three, our principal is now this number, 4633.01 times one plus 0 0.038 times one works out to 4809. 06. We really don't want to keep doing this. It's really, really a very long process. So let's look for a pattern. All right. So after year three, we have the value found after the second year times 1.038 works out to the new total. If we look at year two, we have 4463 times 1.038 works out to this value. For year one, we invested $4,300 times 1.038 to get the year two value. So if we look at this pattern, we're basically just multiplying our new principal times 1.038 in order to get the final value. So after year three, we had $4,300. That was our initial investment, $4,300 times 1.038 times 1.038 times 1.038. Or we can write that as $4,300 times 1.038 cubed. So if you follow this pattern after year 10, it should be the initial principal, $4,300 times 1.038 to the power of 10, which works out to $6,243.70. But how can we write this in a general form? The formula for future value after a certain compounding period is A equals P times 1 plus I to the power of N, where A is the future value P is the initial principal, I is the interest rate per compounding period, and N is the number of compounding periods. So take a look at example 3A on page 24. Both Jolie, age 50, and her daughter Lena, age 18, plan to invest $1,500 in an account with an annual interest rate of 9% compounded monthly. If both women hold their investments until age 65, what will be the difference in the future values of their investments? So Jolie invested a principal of $1,500. The interest rate per compounding period, so we have to take our 9% interest rate, divide it by 12 months in a year to get our compounding period, which is monthly. And then the term, we have to also say monthly. Otherwise, we're comparing apples to oranges and it doesn't work out. So the term is 15 years times 12 months works out to 180 months. So using our formula that we just found, the future value is equal to the principal times one plus the interest rate per compounding period to the power of the number of compounding periods. So $1,500 times one plus 0 0.0075 to the power of 180 works out to 57, 57, 0, 06. Lena has the same principal as Jolie had, $1,500, and the same interest rate at 0 0.0075. Her term, though, is 47 years. So 
47 years times 12 months in a year works out to 564 months. So that's how many compounding periods she's going to have, 564. So A equals P times 1 plus I to the power of N. The principle is 1500, 1 plus the interest rate per compounding period to the power of 564, because that's the number of compounding periods we have, works out to, wow, $101,461.71. That's a huge difference from Jolie. So the difference in values works out to $95,704.64. If you're still confused about compounding periods, please read the chart on page 29. It goes more in depth. All right, next thing, the rule of 72. It estimates the amount of time it takes for an investment to double in value. So the approximate doubling time is equal to 72 divided by the annual interest rate as a percent. Your assignment is pages 40 to 42, numbers 2 to 4, 6, 8, 10, and 13. Use the financial calculator on a TI-83 or the financial calculator provided on Moodle to help you with the questions.